Good evening. I'm Ken Greenberg, and I'm going to talk about the city itself that we all inhabit as a disruptor in ways that we may not fully imagine. Um, in cities around the world, and particularly in our city, Toronto, we are going through an extraordinary change from a 20th century city primarily oriented around the automobile to one which is moving toward a more sustainable future. That's a kind of shorthand for the change that's happening. The most obvious manifestation of that is what you see physically, the city becoming a vertical city, growing up, and in the core of Toronto, this is more evident than anywhere else. The cranes on the sky tell the story. But what's really more interesting than that physical manifestation is that that shift is causing everything we do to change radically. How we move, as one of my fellow speakers already addressed, where we live and work, our place in nature, giving climate change uh, as something that is affecting all our lives. And in particular, I want to talk about how we get together. And we living in what is now acknowledged as the most diverse city in the world have a very special challenge, and that is expanding common ground, expanding the places where we get to know each other, not through the windshields of cars, but actually face to face at eye level on the sidewalks and public spaces in the city. In order to accommodate that in a real estate market where land is extremely expensive, where it's very difficult to create new public space, we have to look to new places. So homage to Marcel Duchamp, who caused us to look at everyday objects, places, that, things that we took for granted with fresh eyes. Um, in 1968, the French students who occupied Paris came up with this wonderful slogan, Sous les pavés, la plage. Um, they meant something very different from what actually happened, which is on the banks of the Seine, lo and behold, we now have Paris Plage happening every summer. So I want to focus on the space under the gardener. Here you see it being created in the middle of the uh, 20th century, and because the deck has not been poured yet, you can see this remarkable space under the gardener created by then chairman of Metropolitan Toronto, Fred Gardner. And so this, this is my neighborhood, and I've been looking at this for a long time. And in 2011, it struck me that this space, Fort York and the Gardner Expressway passing beside it, had an untapped potential. And so I made this sketch which showed this space and the space under the gardener as a kind of central park surrounded by an extraordinary amount of new development that was emerging on all sides. Never imagining at the time that there would be a way to make this happen until in 2015, a great couple of philanthropists in our city, Will and Judy Matthews, came forward with the idea of doing a legacy project and their particular focus being public space. They were the ones who were involved in transforming St. George Street on the U of T campus. My wife and I took them down to see the space under the gardener and talked about this potential and they fell in love with it and so it is actually happening. And this was a diagram we took to the mayor uh, met them in April, by July, with uh, some wonderful colleagues in a landscape firm called Public Work. Uh, we produced this diagram which showed what happens if you lift that top off, what you could do under the gardener. And we were able to leverage $150 million that the city had just spent in restoring the structure, dealing with the issue of falling concrete. So this is what that space is. It was literally hiding in plain sight. It's five stories high. It's 24 meters wide. It is a magnificent colonnade, which you could never build from scratch as a civic space, 
but we simply inherited it and we call it the gift of the gardener. And so the project is this thick red line which links everything 360 degrees around it and has given rise to a bunch of additional trails that are coming to connect to it. It will serve 77,000 residents in Liberty Village, City Place, Fort York neighborhood, Bathurst Key, who've come to live there in the last 15 years, 39% of which of, were born outside Canada. There are several thousand children growing up in this area, completely lacking in public space. It also reveals every layer of Toronto's history from geological history, when this was actually part of Lake Iroquois, to indigenous history, which went on long before European settlers came, the first French settlers, the fur traders, uh, the English arriving 1793, Simcoe, the Great Railway Era, the Grand Trunk Railway, the Industrial Era that followed, and now this post-industrial era of reinterpretation. So there's a legacy of all these pieces on this site. It also is an opportunity to do new and extraordinary things. We will be opening a 250 meter skating trail this December. You're all invited to put on your skates and come. We will be renting skates as well. So it's a year round facility. There'll be a beautiful pedestrian cycle bridge which will give people a view over Fort York now available only to condo dwellers. But essentially, this is not a park. It's not a square. It's not just a trail. It is disrupting the notion of what public space is. It will be a space that plays back to Toronto, the city we're becoming, with over 400 programs a year, everything from daily life activities to visual arts, performing arts, environmental activities, play for all ages. Uh, we've created a new form of stewardship, not something which has not happened in Toronto before with uh, a conservancy uh, that will actually manage this space arm's length from City Hall, working closely with the National Historic Site on Fort York. And it is happening remarkably quickly. So from 2015, the first conception of the idea with an incredible partnership with the City Waterfront Toronto, Artscape, many others who've collaborated with us uh, this is the new skating trail that was just poured last weekend. Uh, most of the work for a $25 million donation will be completed by the end of this calendar year. This is the most exciting part of all, which is a kind of call and response. So I've identified at least 16 things that have happened as a result of this initiative, which will connect to it all on all sides. But what it's really leading to is a new, perhaps disrupted way of understanding the city, not defined by highways and traffic arteries, but actually defined by linked green spaces connecting all parts of our city. And most interesting, this is a case of simultaneous discovery. This has happened not just in Toronto, but is happening all around the world where these post-industrial spaces are being seen with fresh eyes. So we are now part of something called the Highline Network, invited by the founders of the Highline in New York City. We're one of 19 projects. We are the only Canadian one for the moment. Uh, and we're sharing best practices and ideas as we emerge into this new world, addressing what I believe is a profound need, as important as eating or cannabis, which is the ability to come together in public space. Thank you very much.